What's up guys, this is Chris McCormick. Recently I've been focused on the topic of BERT. BERT came out of Google uh, late last year, October 2018, and it achieved really impressive results on a number of very difficult natural language tasks. In fact, they're claiming that they've surpassed human level performance on some of these tasks. So that's really exciting on its own. But the main reason for us to be interested in BERT is this concept of transfer learning. So the BERT architecture uh, is actually a very large model. And because of that, it takes a lot of data and a lot of ex uh, expensive hardware and you know many days on that hardware to train it from scratch. So it wouldn't be very useful to us if we all had to train this model from scratch because it's just not feasible. Um, the good news is that we don't have to do that. So Google has published their pre-trained BERT model, and it's possible to take that model, modify it a little bit by like changing the output layers, doing a little fine tuning training, and then applying it to you know, our own application. And we can get, we can benefit, we can leverage that pre-training that Google's done and see much better results on our own applications than if we had trained our own smaller model from scratch. So that's why BERT's significant. Maybe you already knew some of that. Uh, so I'm planning to write a complete tutorial and you know, probably an ebook and a video course on the subject of BERT. And I'm hoping to go into you know, a lot of detail about how BERT actually works. I'd like, I'd like uh, for you and I to be able to understand really well you know, the inner workings of BERT. That's probably what I'll call the book. Um, so that tutorial, I'm guessing, will be ready by early January of next year. Um, so I've had this idea though that I want to experiment with. I'd like to create some research posts as I'm working on this content so that you can start kind of learning with me sooner um, so you don't have to wait for that later date. And what I'll be doing in these posts is, you know, I'm going to explain what I currently know about BERT. Um, so it's not going to just be me, you know, brainstorming. Like I, I'm going to share my, my research progress. Uh, and, you know, I'll also identify questions like things that I don't um, completely understand yet or that I need to research further. And then my hope is that you'll get to participate in that and ask questions, uh, give me feedback, let me know what, you know, makes sense or what doesn't. And, uh, hey, if you're researching BERT at the same time, maybe you have some insights that I don't that uh, I'd love if you shared with me. So that's kind of the idea for these, these research videos. So... Once the book's out, you know, that's probably the better place to go for a tutorial on BERT. In the meantime, I'm hoping these videos are of value um, to you and I. So it seems to me like there is something missing right now in the, the tutorials and content that's out there currently on uh, understanding how BERT works. And so I think, you know, maybe the ideal way to understand BERT is to first understand all of the building blocks, all of the steps that we took in order to uh, arrive at this BERT architecture. And I think that's kind of how all of the current content out there is written. It assumes that you're familiar with the prior state of the art, and it's just trying to help you get from, from there you know, to the final step of understanding BERT. And I think that's great. We need those tutorials. And I think, you know, a lot of us are familiar with all these other concepts. And really, this final step is all we need. Um, but I think it creates a problem for the rest of us. So it means that there's this, uh, there's this giant mountain <laughs> of concepts that we first have to learn in order to understand BERT. And that's pretty daunting. So first, we have to understand the concept of recurrence in neural networks, RNNs. And then we need to understand the long short-term memory architecture. That's sort of an improvement on RNNs and is also you know, kind of complicated. <laughs> and then we need to know the encoder-decoder architecture for RNNs and this notion of bidirectional LSTMs. And then attention was this idea that kind of builds uh, on top of LSTMs or you know, improves them. And then there was this concept of the transformer that came out of the paper, attention is all you need. And then finally, you know, BERT is kind of built on, it's made up of transformers. The title of that paper, Attention is All You Need. When they say all you need, what they mean is that you can create a powerful language model that doesn't have recurrence. 
So this attention block here, attention was originally introduced as an enhancement for LSTM. So this should probably say like LSTM with attention. What I'm hoping to achieve in this tutorial is that if attention really is all you need, then can we skip over all of this history of LSTMs? My hope is that if someone is new to this field and is not familiar with LSTMs, that they can come in and learn about BERT and you know learn about transformers uh, starting from here without first learning everything there is to know about LSTMs. When you're trying to understand a new algorithm, your first step is usually to do some research to try to find what kind of sources and tutorials and papers are out there on the subject. So I've done a lot of that and I wanted to share with you kind of the uh, overview of the most authoritative sources as well as some of the most popular blog posts that are out there right now. And unfortunately, I think they do all kind of serve to prove my previous point of, you know, that they all kind of expect you to be familiar with the prior state of the art uh, going into them. So let's start with the, the BERT paper itself. So this was published or first submitted in October of 2018. And the first author is Jacob Devlin from Google AI Language. And uh, I've been told that it's a pretty well-written paper, not too difficult to understand. Uh, however, when you get into you know, the section where they finally start talking about the BERT architecture, right away they kind of acknowledge like, you know, the transformer's been around for a while. Um, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna give a uh, explanation of transformers. So if you wanna understand how transformers work, then you can read the original paper um, called uh, Attention is All You Need. And you can also check out this blog post, The Annotated Transformer. So we'll look at uh, those two in just a second here. There's a couple other sources from Google to talk about. Uh, they did publish the uh, implementation of BERT uh, publicly on GitHub. And you can see it's, you know, it's a very popular repo, a lot of people forking it. Um, there's also a lot of uh, discussion going on in the issues section. So it may be a good place to go if you have questions about BERT. And they did that kind of, you know, pretty soon after the release of the paper here in October. There's also an announcement post from Google. So uh, this may have some more kind of, you know, abstract um, insight into the significance of BERT. And this was published around the same time as the, as the paper in the repo. Now, before I forget, uh, I will be publishing a blog post to go along with this video. So if you're looking for the links for these sources, uh, you can find those in the blog post. And I'll make sure to put the link to the blog post down in the description for this video. All right, so moving down from BERT, we need to understand the transformer. And BERT recommended uh, you know, reading the original paper, which is Attention is All You Need. And this is the paper that introduced that concept of a transformer. It was published um, around June of 2017. And um, the first author is Ashish Vaswani. Now, rather than talk about the paper, there's, there's actually a, uh, a popular blog post called The Annotated Transformer by Alexander Rush. And this was published uh, in the middle of 2018. So in this blog post, it's actually a Python notebook. You can kind of see a, a code cell right here. And he includes the full text of the, the original paper and then implements the transformer from scratch using PyTorch. So uh, from scratch implementations are something I really like. So I think this is a, this is a really cool idea. Um, however, we do kind of run into a lot of the same problems that we have with the other content. So in order to kind of read through this paper, there's a lot of referencing uh, of attention attention weighted positions, there's this concept of multi-head attention and self-attention, um, and a lot of just, you know, references to uh, sequencing terminology, sequence-aligned RNNs. And then with the, uh, with the architecture, you know, they also reference this encoder-decoder concept. So again, in order to understand the transformer, we need to have like a good background in attention, 
need to know, you know, what an encoder and decoder is. And even though uh, the transformer is not a sequential model, it seems like we need to know kind of, you know, the recurrent, uh, recurrent neural network terminology and, and concepts in order to get through this. All of this feels really discouraging. It seems like we just keep going, you know, further down, deeper and deeper in this stack, and it just feels like there's so much to learn. Uh, a ray of hope, though, that I found is a series of posts done by Jay Alomar. So Jay's blog is really popular. Uh, he writes really well, very clearly. I feel like his posts are always very readable. And uh, he puts a lot of effort into his illustrations, which is also really nice. You do need to um, have some background in recurrence and LSTMs in order to go through these. Uh, and so I'm kind of still you know, building up some of the prereqs that I need in order to understand them. But from my initial read, they do look uh, very promising. So if, if, you're, if you're up for it, if you think you've got that background, then maybe consider going through uh, these three posts, you know, starting with the tension and then the transformer and then BERT. That may be enough to get you a pretty solid understanding. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I'll get to comment more on them once, uh, once I'm further along. And then finally, um, if, uh, if you're like me and you need all that background in sequence models, because you just you haven't uh, done that type of deep learning yet, uh, there's a great course on Coursera by Andrew Ng. Um, Andrew's, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of his. His uh, Intro to Machine Learning course was really impactful for me in my career. I love learning from him. I wish he would just teach all the time, but I think he's probably too, you know, too important, too valuable to, to spend all of his time doing that. Um, but it's, uh, so he founded this company, Deep Learning AI. And as far as I can tell, you know, a big part of what they do is, is just produce this course and sell it on Coursera. Uh, they have this deep learning specialization. It's got five courses in it. If you've already got some, you know, background in machine learning and a little in deep learning, you can do what I did and skip ahead to the sequence models course. It's the last one. And it does cover uh, recurrence and you know, the encoder decoder concept and LSTMs, uh, bidirectional RNN is a topic in there, which I'm assuming is similar to the bidirectional LSTM. And then it does include attention at the very end. So I've really been enjoying this course as I'm going through it. It is pretty hard. Um, something I like about Andrew is that he gives you all of the technical details. You really, uh, you know, you, you, you get the, the um, you really get the fundamental understanding, I guess, of, of the topic. So that does make the course difficult, but at the same time, if you're, if you're willing to you know, put the effort in, it is very doable. It's very understandable because he does such a good job. So definitely recommend that course if, uh, if you're interested in getting all that background. Uh, it's, uh, you can enroll for like a week for free and then it's $50 a month after that. So not, not too expensive. Um, but there you go. So that's kind of the summary of, uh, of sources. Where can we go from here? We've clearly got a lot of ground to cover. And I would say, you know, the main objective here is to arrive at a clear, nice explanation of the BERT transformer architecture that doesn't require so much prior knowledge in order to, uh, to understand. Um, so that's gonna, that's the end goal. Uh, but there are a number of important aspects of BERT that are a little easier to wrap your head around and that we can, we can kind of use as good starting points. So the first of these is we can look at kind of how you feed text into BERT, what the input representation looks like, just the mechanics of that. And then we can also look at uh, how uh, BERT represents words. Uh, it uses this word piece concept that we can, we can explore. And that's actually covered in a, a post that I've got out on uh, creating word embeddings from BERT. So there's some content out there already. And then um, next, I think it'd be interesting to kind of see BERT in, in the context of, you know, an actual task that we can apply it to. So we've got a post out already on uh, performing classification, text classification with BERT. I think it, it'll also be interesting to look at the uh, specific tasks in the GLUE benchmark. The GLUE benchmark is a collection of NLP tasks, and it's it's what BERT uh, reports against, and you know did really well at. So we can see it kind of in the context of uh, of applications. And then 
if you're uh, familiar or you know have gone through any of the content that I, that I created on Word to Vec, you might remember me talking about the concept of the fake task. So in, with the fake task, the idea is that we've got this, this task that we're training the word model on that's not actually that useful. No, we don't actually care about the task. The point is more that we have plenty of training data for the task and the word model learns good word vectors as a byproduct of being trained on this, this kind of bogus task. So BERT uses the same kind of concept. Um, it's got two bogus tasks, masked language model and, or masked, masked word prediction and uh, next sentence prediction. And again, these are kind of you know bogus tasks that aren't that useful necessarily, but they um, we have plenty of, of training data for them, and they result in BERT learning you know really strong understanding of language. So then the details of the transformer, I'm not sure how this will play out. Maybe um, as I kind of continue to to research this, I'll be able to to you know share a few insights each week. Um, we'll just have to see kind of how that goes. All right, I look forward to going through this with you guys. Um, leave comments, questions, uh, insights for me. Um, yeah, here we go.